What is up, everybody? Welcome to Pub Sports Radio and welcome to the DraftKings Picks and Prediction Show for UFC 300. We got Alex Pereira going against Jamal Hill in what has to be one of the most stacked cards of all time, at least on paper. Uh, we'll, we'll see if it delivers, and I have a strong feeling that it will. How can it not? And it's an interesting card from a DraftKings perspective because we'll, we'll talk about it. It's like pretty much everybody's in play this week. I mean, pretty much everybody. So I'm curious to hear these guys' thoughts. We got Wheezy, Monk, and Gordo in the building. We'll start with you, Wheezy. Are you looking forward to UFC 300? Yeah. How could you not? This is such a great card uh, from top to bottom. Figueredo Garbrandt, first fight of the night. A couple of legends going at it. and Bobby Green, Jimmy Miller. I mean, uh, the very handsome Jessica Andrade in the next fight. Turner Moicano, Yusuf Lopez. The debut of Kayla Harrison. I mean, Gordo was saying before the show started, something like 12% of the total champions in the entire organization history are on this card. It's crazy. I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to breaking it down with you guys. So many great fights to talk about. Yep, 100%. We got Monk in the building. Monk, I like the hat. How you doing? Thanks, man. You inspire me every day. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, and how many? And if we look back, not only twelve percent, but that number is only going to go up if we get new champs. Like, say, a year from now, two, three years from now, we look back at this card. I mean, we could have uh, many more champs it. or former. Cha yeah, it, that's very true. Uh, technically, I guess they like to say three belts on the line. I'll go with it. Um, but yeah, every fight's a banger, man. Even the ones that. I mean, we're we're talking Jim Miller three hundred. We're talking an Andrade fight against Rodriguez, and then it only goes up from there. So, going to be fantastic. Yep. And last but not least, we got Gordo. Gordo, how are you feeling about UFC three hundred? Oh, it's hard to contain my excitement. No, it's a great one. And, you know, I I'm, I have classes all week, and I'm trying to tell my buddies there, it's like, this card may be the greatest card of all time. And, and they don't get – they don't understand the excitement we have for this one. I'm happy to talk to some uh, fellow – let's say fight fans and ready to hear your thoughts on it because I've been itching to talk about it. This card is amazing from top to bottom and it should be a pretty, um, let's say not only entertaining one, but an interesting one to see that unfolds on DraftKings. There's a lot of options at play and I really am confident the way it should play out. I'm hoping we're all on the same side. I hope we're able to make some cash this weekend. Let's do it. Before we get into it, if you guys could please do us a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe here to Pub Sports Radio. We go live every Wednesday at nine o'clock Eastern time. Next week we'll be off and then we'll be right back after it in two weeks and i do want to shout out the chat we got elijah one dream first one in the building let's go let's go we got lou betcha who uh filled in for wheezy the last two weeks and it just so happened uh it was wheezy's best two weeks of the the year these last two weeks on DraftKings. wheezy's been just killing it so we'll see if wheezy can keep the momentum rolling back on the show we got dixon cider in the building what is up dixon silent rob and Lou wants another German energy drink. I can't believe it. Did you see that, Wheezy? I don't think you saw it, but Lou drank a German energy drink on the show last week. Wow. I, I mean, like, because the Germans are just full of pip and vinegar as it is, you know. I mean, they do not need energy. So, God, <laughs> man, have to I don't know. Lou told me yeah, he was up what, was five it, days was, straight. Five did days. he enjoy it? Wow. No. I mean. No? As much, okay. as, Lou, as, much as Lou enjoys anything. <laughs> yeah, that was. He loved it. That was wild. <laughs> Spoiler, it wasn't top five fun. moments on the show of all time. <laughs> we got old E. What is up, old E? We got Sean V as well. What is up, everybody? All right, guys. I say we, we dive right into it then, and we're going to start with the fight to target. There are a lot of options, so I'm sure we're going to all have something different here. Um, I'll kick this one off. My fight to target is going to be my, my favorite fight on the card. It's going to be that Justin Gaethje, uh, Max Holloway fight. This is a fight that I think is going to be like fight of the year contender, fight of the decade contender even. I mean, how is this fight not going to be, going to be fun? We have Max Holloway sitting at 7,400. We got Justin Gaethje sitting at 8,800. Both guys very high volume. And like I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the Holloway side at this price tag. It's a fourteen hundred dollar price tag savings. And my thinking is like even at a loss, like if this goes twenty five minutes in a loss, Max Holloway can still, you know, maybe even pay off this price tag with the amount of volume that this guy lands. And then of course on the Gaethje side, you have the power upside. You have a lot of volume in his own right. So I think this fight's going to deliver from a traffic's perspective. Justin Gaethje's only, only eight thousand eight hundred, and then as far as Max Holloway. I think he's one of the, the best values on the slate. So this is my favorite fight to target on the card. Uh, Wheezy, what is your favorite fight to target for UFC 300? 
Uh, I'll give you guys Oliveira versus Sarukian this week. Um, you got Charles Oliveira scoring 3.5 DraftKings points per minute, and you've got Sarukian scoring 4.16. And you get you kind of get the feeling that the way that Oliveira fights is just going to bring a complete war. This guy marches forward like a zombie. He never stops throwing strikes. He really doesn't defend takedowns. So you could see Sarukian getting a bunch of takedowns, but then Oliveira will just be throwing up submission after submission after submission. So, you know, I, I could see um, either one of these guys getting a finish. I could see um, Oliveira getting reversals, knockdowns. I could get, I could see um, uh, Sarukian landing a bunch of significant strikes, getting knockdowns, because Oliveira is very poor defensively. So I, I just see this fight being a back-and-forth war. With uh, Oliveira, you only have to pay 7500 for a guy that's got nearly 100% finish rate. Dude, this guy has won uh, 11 of his last 12 fights, and 10 of those 11 wins are finishes. The only one he didn't finish was um, El Kukui, who he had his arm snapped completely in half, and just because that dude's a psychopath, he didn't tap. So, I mean, you could get Oliveira for 7500 who's got a ton of finish upside, and you could get his opponent at 8,700, who's probably going to get a ton of takedowns and control time and rack up a bunch of significant strikes too. So it's a great fight to target either side of. Yeah, there's a couple fights on this car where it's like, it's literally a Charles Oliveira fight, which you have to target that fight. It's a Max Holloway fight. You have to target that fight. A couple others as well. But yeah, that's definitely one of them. Uh, one of the better fights on the card as well. Monk, what is your favorite fight to target this week? You guys nailed it. It's a Zhang Wei Li fight. You got to target that oh. one. Go main event. Uh, and we're at the perfect prices where we, this is a great fight to target because at 7K, if something happens and Yan Zhao Nan uh, gets the Ann New, gets her hand raised, she's averaging like over 90 points per win. Her last one was 110, and she takes care of business. She's only been in what, one, two, five round fights. So a lot of that. Uh, is three round fights or uh, or or shorter? You know what I mean. Didn't go to decision. Um, so she scores pretty well for the strawweight division. To be completely honest, and at seven K, if she wins, that's pretty much automatic, as we say. Meanwhile, what do I have to say about the queen herself, Zhang Wei Li? I mean, for God's sakes, guys, five rounds, a hundred and ninety points against a striker in Amanda Lemos. Um, I mean, ninety three against Esparza with the quick work in the second round, one thirty two. Against Joanna, I could keep going and going with these crazy scores, but I don't need to. Uh, she is a must play in all formats this week. 9,200 is a deal. Um, love this fight, both sides, but clearly I'm on the Zhang Wei Li side. Yep, me, me as well. Gordo, what is your favorite fight to target this week? You guys hit my favorite three on the nail. Let's go to number four here, and I still like this one very, very much. This is a stack card. Let's talk about the obvious one this week, the 9.5K Bo Nickel versus the biggest underdog in UFC history here in Cody Brundage, 6.7K. It's a very, very volatile matchup between uh, two guys who like to finish fights. Let's just put it that way. You have two guys in complete opposite trajectories. The betting line indicates that. And what we do have is a fight that is expected to end like minus 300 in the first seven and a half minutes. It is expected to end early. And it is one where you could see both guys having big paths to success. Now, of course, we have to project Bo Nickel to win this fight more often than not. He is, like I mentioned, the biggest favorite of all time, minus 2,500 right now at this point. I'm not sure, but only 9.5K. We have seen more expensive salaries. With as many underdogs as there is, he is attainable to go up there and get, and he has averaged 114 points his last two wins, including 127 point last time. And he gets a guy who has been finished in the first round before in Cody Brundage. Although all the love is for Nickel, and that is a, a clear play this week, I mean, Cody Brundage, 6.7K, if this guy wins, it is going to be at minimal uh, ownership, and it's probably going to be an early finish. I mean, when these guys won fights, he scored 101, 96, 114, 97. Those are some very, very good score, which would absolutely break the slate at 6.7K. I'm not saying it happens very often or, or even at all, um, but when it does happen, this is a fight you're going to look to target from both sides. Yep, absolutely. So we gave four different ones there I, I feel like we could give like four more is the is the thing for this card yeah. but um uh, moving on to the fight to fade this is where it gets tough because it's like i don't i don't know like i i have my fight to fade but it's not something i feel amazing about uh we'll start with you wheezy wheezy which fight are you fading for this week uh i i've got two that i could fade here but uh i'll give you guys garbrandt versus figueredo I, I think it's a great one to fade um you have to pay up 9100 for davis and figueredo he only um, scores 2.82 DraftKings points per minute. 
And um, he's on the low end in terms of total points per fight, which is kind of alarming because he's had like five or six fights that were scheduled for five rounds. So for him to be on that low end around 120, when we see a lot of other fighters up in the high 120s, 130s, um, that, that's a pretty good one to avoid. And another one is Garbrandt as well. He only scores 2.56 DraftKings points per minute. Both of these guys are extremely low volume in terms of their striking output at distance. And because of the way that both of them fight, they're both kind of hard to track down and take down. So I think that these guys, this, these guys are kind of going to stand and bang, but neither one of them throws a lot and they're both pretty, they both move a lot and are pretty defensively sound. So I think it's going to be a low volume striking match that probably goes the distance. And I've actually bet it uh, to go the distance. So um, yeah, I, I'm I'm staying away from this one. This is a pretty easy one to stay away from for me. Yeah, I went with the the, the same thing. I mean, that's that that'd be the one if I had to pick um, the Garbrandt and Figgy fight, just because of the like the way Garbrandt's been fighting the last several fights, because he kind of has to. You know, he knows he doesn't have the chin to go out there and get into these striking exchanges with a lot of guys, including like like Davis and Figueredo. So I could see like a very very low volume type fight here, and really for this one. As long as Davison doesn't get that first round KO, I don't think he's going to be optimal because we have some just crazy scores on this card. We have Zhang Wei Li. We have even Kayla Harrison coming in here can put up a big score. We have Bo Nickel who can get a first round finish. Justin Gaethje who has a ton of upside as well. As long as Davison doesn't catch him in that first round, I don't know if it's going to be a high enough volume fight for him to go out there and end up on the optimal lineup. And then as far as Garbrandt, I just don't like him at all, really. I mean, I don't think he's finishing Figgy. Um, I don't think he has any volume at all. I don't think he's wrestling on that. So, yeah, I think that'd be the one fight if I had to, to fade one on the card for sure. And Kyle's saying you guys would make a great boy band. I think I have the hair the for it. Yep. I have the wig for it. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, sure. I got that part done. But Hey, we've heard you sing, man. You could do it. Yeah, I could be the lead singer with, with this nice wig. I, pre I prefer, like, a black wig, though, like Diego Lopez. I feel I think oh, that, yeah, you got to have the band. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so you mean Weezy on the same page there, Gordo? What fight are you fading for this week? Let's go with a hot take here and, and continue to talk about Diego Lopez for a fight to fade. I think that is a a very exciting fight, one I'm very much looking forward to. But when we're looking at the overall theme of this DraftKings card, is we have guys with a ton of volume. We have guys with clear paths to 130, 140 points. Whereas this fight is one where I think I could be a bit underweight too. Of course, Diego Lopez has the skills to finish fights at any point in time, but we have seen him do it so far and score 90 points and 105 points against much inferior fighters to Sadiq Yusuf, in my opinion. And if that's the case, if that is really what his ceiling is limited to, I do think people can go out there and outscore him. Lopez is a style that he could finish a fight at any time, including fights where he's being dominated. And I don't think Lopez is a guy who is necessarily going to go out there and score eight, nine takedowns. I don't think he's going to go out there and land 100 strikes. He has uh, ability to go out there and snatch something up, but not really have the other metrics to go out there and, and compete with the high scores this week. You add in the fact that Sadiq Youssef is a guy who's probably going to be the better minute winner, but Lopez has been pretty durable. I can see a spot where either Youssef wins a decision and puts up 75, 80 points, or you get a, a opportunistic submission win from Lopez putting up 90, and, and that really doesn't go out there and compete with scores around them. It's a controversial one because I do think it's an exciting one, um, but one where I'm going to be a bit underweight to the possibilities of this high-scoring card. Yep, makes sense. Monk, uh, what's what's so funny? I, a lot of our uh, Cubans <laughs> comment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. I think that's probably trademarked, though. Um, yeah. I guess just to be different, I'll give you one that is a little bit riskier to fade. Uh, Bobby Green, Jim Miller. Um, just because neither one of them allows a ton of points at all. In fact, both of them are towards the bottom uh, end of points allowed on this card. Jim Miller under 89 per loss, and then Bobby Green given up just 79 per loss. Uh, Bobby Green does score well in a couple of his last matchups, but if it's not, uh, let's see, uh, kind of fluky, I'm not going to say fluke finish, fluky finish against Grant Dawson in the first uh, 30 seconds, basically. He scores 127, um, and then 107 against uh, a kind of washed Ferguson in 2023. So other than that, he's not really scoring fantastically very consistently. So I think Jim Miller probably i don't I, i'm rooting for him my heart says jim miller my uh my brain says green's gonna get it but most of all i think this one goes into late second third round decision territory and nobody really scores well uh for the salary so if i have to pick one i'll uh i'll fade this one but never fading jim miller in my heart ever 
Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably be fading Bobby Green. I will have some some Miller though. Um, let's move on to the fighter to fade. And Monk, we'll we'll stick with you. Which fighter are you fading for this week? Yeah, I'll kind of echo what I believe uh, Wheezy said. The high price Davison Figueredo at ninety one hundred. Yeah, we all know Cody has the chin issues. Um, you know what? <clears throat> excuse me, was knocked out by a flyweight in the past. Uh, so that is kind of a, an issue, but. It hasn't been as bad. I mean, Trevin Jones, Keller. Keller is not the greatest striker, but he does hold power. And uh, Cody Garbrandt, you know, it, it only went three minutes, but still, uh, he was all right. So we'll, we'll just see. I just don't know if Figgy's going to land on the chin. And I think exactly what Weezy said. If he doesn't find a first-round finish, how does he possibly pay off this $9,100 salary? Um, so, yeah, I'd rather, you know, either pay up 100 for Zhang Wei Li or pay down a little bit and get one of the other guys uh, in this range. So, Give me the slight fade on uh, Figueredo here. Yeah, it, it's Figgy for me as well, um, but I'll give a different one. I'll, I'll go Bobby Green, 8,600. I'm kind of worried about Bobby Green. and his, uh, He took an absolute beating. I mean, a beating is an understatement. In his last fight against Jalen Turner, uh, Kerry Hatley, I'm not sure if uh, they arrested him yet, but they, they should, and he should be charged <laughs> with attempted murder for, for what happened. And Bobby Green even was talking about it at media day today. He was, he gave like a whole spiel about it. Um, so I think that really affected him, but yeah, he's coming back in here. Um, just like, that was like four or five months ago, not too long ago. So yeah, I worry about the durability of green. Uh, I, I do think, you know, a green decisions very much on the table. I think he can maybe outpoint uh, Jim Miller across three rounds, but I don't think he's finishing Jim Miller and I don't think he's wrestling Jim Miller. So if anything, it, it would be Jim Miller. You're getting a thousand dollar savings for the guy who I think has the finish upside. So I'll be staying away from Bobby Green. But yeah, Figgy is somebody that I, I totally agree at nine thousand one hundred. I won't be playing as well. Uh, Gorda, who are you fading for this week? Yeah, exact same thing here in Bobby Green. I'm not going to add much more to it because I might talk about this fight later. This is a spot where I think there are better people around him, and I'm going to be fading him this week. All right, and Wheezy. Yeah, I mean, you guys already got – I had Green and I had Figueredo, but I'll give you another one. Um, how about Aljamain Sterling? He's a, traditionally a pretty good scorer, 3.6 uh, DraftKings points per minute. That's really solid, but – I don't think he's getting Calvin Cater down and finishing him, right? So if he doesn't do that, Calvin Cater is a very durable guy with like 90% takedown defense. And, and you know, Aljamain Sterling historically as a bantamweight is getting his takedowns at less than a 25% clip. So I kind of feel like um, this is a bad spot to pay up for Aljamain Sterling because – Cater does not really allow a lot of grappling points against him. And if you're not really getting on his back, if you're not taking that guy down over and over again, you're sure as hell not knocking him out. So uh, at 8,400, I think it would be a really risky play this week to uh, to roster Aljo. Yep. No, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I think a lot of people will be on Aljo. There were some pictures that emerged uh, today. Uh, Aljo looking completely shredded. And we'll see if uh, that'll help his 24% takedown accuracy being being that shredded. Um, so let's move on to our favorite dog on the card. There's some there's some solid options sticking out. We'll start with you, Gordo. Which dog do you like this week? I think for those who who know me a lot, they know which my favorite dog is. I actually have something that's been hanging up in my living room for the past few months. That's a pretty sick poster. Um, but it, it really tells you uh, what side I'm on here. I didn't wear the merch today because I thought it'd be a bit of overkill, but I'm a big Max Holloway fan, and, I, and I, it's a fun person to cheer for because he historically has been one of the best drafting scorers of all time. He is someone who has a ton of volume. He is absolutely breaking records when it comes down to strikes landed and, and the pace he fights at, and, and although I can go out here and I can um, – suck up to him a lot let's put it that way uh, he's just an overall rate fighter to target on DraftKings. his durability allows for him to have a very very high floor and he's to be in a very very high pace matchup i'm not promising he wins this fight a lot of the time i think it's a very close one with a great competitor in justin gaethje but this has all the makings to be one of the greatest fights you've ever seen dude two guys who are going to push forward throw heavy it's going to be a very very exciting affair and if that's the case if this fight really plays out at the same pace that we expect it to seventy four hundred dollars for someone in max holloway who has historically been a phenomenal volume fighter is a great salary you look at his scores against cater scoring 209 um rodriguez scoring 153 even uh against ortega scoring 164 like those are some amazing scores um he doesn't necessarily have to go out there and get that ceiling but at 7.4k you know he has the volume to go out there and 
score 70, 80 points in a loss in what is a really, really competitive affair over 25 minutes. His floor is insane. I do think he has more chance to win the line in tails. And as this line close, he is by far my favorite underdog this week. Yeah, man, I was I was telling Weezy on Stat Diggers on, on Sunday, I, I think these two are just going to swing dicks. And I think it's going to come down to who has the bigger dick in there um, on Saturday. So we'll see. Or I think whoever has the bigger dick is going to is going to win the fight. Um, yeah, for me, I'm going with I love Holloway. I mean, I think that would it's between him. It's very close between him and the other one would be Charles Oliveira. It's just weird seeing Charles Oliveira at seven thousand five hundred against anybody not named Islam Mahachev. I mean, this is a guy that has an incredible finish rate. He's very dangerous and he's beaten, you know, so many great fighters. He's beaten Dustin Poirier. He's beaten Michael Chandler. He's beaten Justin Gaethje. You know, it, it wouldn't shock if he went out there and, and hurt Armin Sarukian, knocked him out or, or got the club and sub. And he's just so cheap. You know, getting a guy this good, this dangerous, this proven at 7,500, sign me up. I think Charles Oliveira is very live to get the finish. So I love Charles, but I love Paul Oliveira as well. I'm going to have both of them in my lineup we'll talk about later. And by the way, I do see your comments in the chat, guys. We'll get to those questions at the end, as always. I have them started and ready to go. Uh, Monk, who is your favorite dog for this week? Yeah, I love both of them. I mean, those are the obvious two that stand out, man. For me, number one, it's Charles Oliveira at 7,500. Look, he's been 7,600 a couple of times in his past five, but like you said, it's against like Dustin Poirier. That turned out pretty well. He ended up with 94 points. Uh, and then Benny Dariush, that turned out well, ended up with 113. I mean, he's scoring just as much when he's a dog as he is when he's 85, 99,000. You know what I mean? The guy is ridiculous. I think one of you said before the show, he's finishing 11 of 12 fights, something ridiculous like that. I mean, we're getting him at cheaper than we've gotten him in at least three and a half years. So yeah, give me Charles Oliveta. Granted, Armin looks like he was created in a lab. Uh, it's insane what this guy looks like right now. And he is on a complete tear, but Man, the number's right for me. 7,500 fits perfect. Give me Charles Oliveira for sure. And Wheezy, who is your favorite dog for this week? Yeah, I'm kind of hurt that nobody picked Jerry Prochaska because, I mean, I you know, he's 8,000, and, and I think he's going to get a win here. But when I was looking at Prochaska and actually writing him up as my dog this week, I looked at the name right below him, and I'm like, oh, man, really? Jamal Hill, who's fighting for five rounds? who scores more points per minute than Prochaska does. Prochaska scores 3.68, but Hill is out there scoring 3.72, just a little bit more. And he's got the kind of opponent that's not going to take him down and hold him down, like potentially could happen to Prochaska in the Rackage fight. And then one of these guys is fighting for three rounds. The other one's fighting for five, and, and Jamal Hill is notoriously durable. So... I decided to go with Jamal Hill as my favorite dog this week because he, he's scoring that solid 3.72 points per minute. He's got five rounds to work. There's definitely concern about that Achilles injury and the leg kicks and the left hook that Pereira possesses, but Hill is durable. He's got no quit in him, and that dude will fight for your money as long as his body and brain hold up. So getting him at 7,900 this week, that's high. Uh, that's solid value for a high-scoring guy like Hill. Even in a decision loss at his current work rate, extrapolated over 25 minutes, you're looking at 93 points. That's in a loss for 25 minutes. So uh, I do like Hill a lot this week. Yeah, I'm surprised that the first time we touched on on the main event, but it just goes to show you how stacked uh, this card this card really is. All right, so we got the favorite dog there. Let's move on to our prize picks plays this week and we will start with monk what do you got from a prize fix perspective um let's see i've got a couple written down screw it we'll just go with uh the queen again zhang Weili, over three and a half takedowns honestly um she's landing a ridiculous a ridiculous amount of takedowns sorry i'm just trying to vamp for half a second there we go uh six in her last one three against yoana five against rose the second time i mean that's a ridiculous number in just her last uh four fights and that's with zero against esparza who she still subbed and scored uh 93 points on so yeah give me uh the over 3.5 takedowns uh against Jan. i think she's super tough i think she can get up 
Um, and I think we have a possibility for uh, some rinse and repeat takedowns here. So I really like that number this week. Hopefully the fight goes long and she breaks Max Holloway's record. Or let, at least let's break 200, Wiley. I think you can do it. I hope. <laughs> that, that'd, be, that'd be amazing. Um, right. I actually had that one written down as well. So right there with you, Monk. I'm going with another takedown uh, th- one that I like. And it's going to be Aljamain Sterling less on the two takedowns. First and foremost, I think is wrestling's very overrated at Bantamweight. He's only completing takedowns at a 24% accuracy. And then he's coming up a weight class now and he's taking on Calvin Cater, who uh, like Sean V mentioned in the chat, he hasn't really been grappled a a ton, but when he has been grappled, he's able to stuff a lot of takedowns, 92% takedown defense. And and with Aljamain Sterling, when he does get a takedown, you aren't going anywhere. Like if he gets one takedown, that's probably either the round or the fight. So for him to hit this, he's going to have to get three takedowns. I just don't see it. I think he's going to fail on a lot of the takedowns first and foremost. And if he does get a takedown, like I said, I think he probably gets the back and probably controls the rest of the rounds. So I don't think he's going to go out there and get three, four, five takedowns, nothing like that. So give me the less on the Aljamain Sterling takedowns. Uh, Wheezy, what do you like from a prize picks perspective? Uh, I was looking at the more than 11 and a half fight time for Davis and Figueredo. Um, big cage low output um and you know i think it's the first fight of the night live crowd there's something about these big hyped cards that fights tend to go over i think both guys play a little bit more defense the stakes are a little bit higher it's kind of like world cup soccer everyone bitches that there's not enough goals well these dudes are playing for their lives out there and they don't want to make any mistakes and i think it's just I've been noticing on these big pay-per-view cards, a lot of fights that you would expect to go under, go over. And um, I think that Garbrandt's chin is just a little bit uh, overstated how bad it is. And, uh, you know, Figueredo's a flyweight fighting up at Bantamweight now. So 11 and a half minutes go over. I like that one. Yeah, I have the the figgy less on the fantasy score. I think it has potential to be like a boring fight. So kind of kind of the same thinking there on that fantasy score. I think that that's, I think I have it at like ninety six point five, which is yeah. pretty, kind of crazy to me. Uh, Gordo, what are you liking from a prize picks perspective? Yeah, I said I'd talk about Bobby Green going forward. I'll talk about him right here. I'm taking the under in his fantasy score this week. It is set at an 89.5, so ninety points. And uh, to me, it's a pretty simple dynamic. He is not only a guy who's going to have a ton of risk. Mm-hmm health wise with it being knocked out recently and a guy facing guys dangerous as Jim Miller, but he's a guy who has primarily been a volume based striker. And although I do think he can go out there and win a decision that path to victory doesn't score enough to, to cover this price tag. In my opinion, he's a guy who, um, has historically gotten those decisions and on prize pick, you only get 20 points for a decision win. So you add in the fact that he's a guy who can be finished here against a dangerous guy in Jim Miller, who is hungry for a UFC 300 win to, to finish a trio here. I do think it's a spot that he does go under a, a majority of the time here. Definitely more than the, the 50% that prize picks gives you on a over or under. And this is a spot that I'm liking to fade here. Give me the under on Bobby green. All right. There we go. Sorry. I'm eating a Tums. Some heartburn going on. All right, um, so let's move on now to our favorite GPP play, and we'll start with Monk. What are you liking? Let's see. Well, I've already like talked about Zhang Wei Li a lot, so I should probably stop before she thinks I'm stalking her or something. So I'll switch to uh, super obvious Bo Nickel, 9,500. I mean, come on. Believe it or not. 9,500 is the cheapest we've ever gotten Bo Nickel so far in the UFC. He was the highest ever at 9,800 against Val Woodburn and then 96 in his debut against Pickett. So, I mean, at, a, at 127 and 100, his average is like 113. We're, uh, we're getting possibly the best value we've had on him so far against, uh, against Cody Brundage. Bo Nickel probably only uh, strictly defending the guillotine this entire camp. So, uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, I mean, nothing against Brundage, but man, this should be an absolute smash spot. I think he scores great. Hopefully it's a KO, and then we get more points out of it. That's that's the only thing I'm thinking. So yeah, give me Bo Nickel. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be touching on Bo uh, very shortly. But for me, for my GPP play, I'm going with uh, Jalen Turner, who is 8,900. And yeah, I, li- I like Turner in this matchup. Um, I think that Moikano is going to struggle to get takedowns here. I think Turner is going to be able to keep this upright. And when it is upright and on the feet, I mean, Turner just he has the death touch. I mean, we've seen Moikano hurt multiple times. We've seen him knocked out multiple times. And 
You know, Jalen Turner is a guy that has 14 wins. All 14 of those come in the first or second round. Just very, very dangerous. And he's not even 9K. You know, he's cheaper than, than Figgy, Wei Lee, Kayla, and Nickel. And I think he has that first round knockout upside. So give me Jalen Turner as a GPP play this week. Uh, Gordo, what do you like in this week? Yeah, I'm going with uh, Zhang Wei Li here at 9.2K. She's one of my favorite plays in the slate. Just like Holloway, she has the ability to go out there and put up Record-breaking scores. I mean, 190 points last time is pretty incredible, and she is someone who has great output. She has a, a good wrestling path to victory here, and I just think all the stars align for her to have a very, very good ceiling. You look at her ability to go out there and, and dominate the mat against a very physical fighter in Lemos, and then you look back to the fact where uh, Yan Zhanan was controlled, dominated by a girl in Carla Esparza. There are paths here. There are clear upside, and I do think that Zhang has the cardio, the output, the volume to put up a very big score, and almost 300 strikes uh, against Lemos. And even if we don't want to, even if we want to eliminate that one, she's put up 132 against Joanna, uh, 136 against Andraz, 121 against Aguilar. She has been keen to putting up big score, and I do think she has the ability to do that again here with a pretty favorable matchup on the mat. 9.2K. I, I do like the upside here. All right, and Wheezy, what do you got for a GPP play? Yeah, I was going to go with Jalen Turner as well. And I'm looking at uh, my betting template here, Brady, that we're going to be featuring later on on probability. My really friend. soon, actually. I think. Yeah, like really soon. 30 and minutes. I'm looking at uh, the win condition for Jalen Turner. <laughs> and I mean, it gets no better than this, right? Jalen Turner's got seven wins in UFC fights and three round fights, all seven of them inside the distance. Moicano, three losses that came in three round fights. All three of them inside the distance, 10 of 10 between the wins of Turner and the losses of Moicano are inside the distance. It's literally 100% of his win condition according to prior fights. So uh, you're getting a guy who's got a minus 233 money line, 70% implied to win, and 100% of his implied win condition is inside the distance. In addition to that, Jalen Turner, second on this roster in terms of points scored per win at 115.68. And guess what? He's never even fought a five-round fight. I mean, some of these guys have got much more points per win because they're in five-round fights that go for 25 minutes. So uh, Turner at 8,900 this week, I, you just don't want to ignore him now with the upside that this guy has and the ability he has to finish fights. Yep. Agreed. I like it. All right, let's move on now to our favorite cash play. I'll kick this one off. Uh, Monk touched on him. It, it's Bo Nickel for me, 9500 It's not like he's even like too expensive. I mean, this is the, the biggest favorite of all time. He's anywhere from minus 2000 to I saw minus 3333 And honestly, you know, looking at the line, I thought DraftKings was going to do the old, you know, put him at like 9700 Maybe could even be like the first 9,800 fighter, but no, they, they priced him at 9,500, not even 9,600. So it's not like he's too expensive here. And yeah, um, not sure what the odds are off the top of my head, but I'm sh I'm pretty sure he's like minus 200 to win in like the very first round. So yeah, it's it's Bo Nickel for me. Um, I think he's the safest play on the board, obviously, and I think he has high upside to go along with it. Gordo, who do you like for cash this week? Yeah, it's Bo Nickel as well. Uh, you you mentioned all the points, so I'll pivot to a different option. I also like Kayla Harrison, 9.3K. <laughs> In my mind, she's just a pure pivot off of someone like Bo Nickel, uh, someone who doesn't have the same ceiling, isn't projected to win as often as Bo Nickel, but someone who has a good chance to win, who has good upside, and is priced similarly. Kayla Harrison's a girl who is a very big favorite, is highly touted, and although she hasn't fought UFC-level competition, she's a match against a 42-year-old Holly Holm, and then I do think she's a lot of opportunity to go out there and get a finish her own right. We know she's very physical. We know she can be dominant, and although she has questions about her making the weight, shall she make it? I do think she'll be a very physical opponent here, able to drag it down to the mat, and finally have her show the ability to use elbows, which we haven't seen her do so far inside an MMA cage. So I, I do think there are paths to success for wrestling, paths to success for um, finish upside, and I do think there's a very high likelihood she wins, making her a decent cash option, but obviously a pivot off a of bow nickel. Yep, makes sense to me. Uh, Monk, favorite cash play for this week? Yeah, geez, it's, I'm trying to get different here, but I mean, you guys nailed it. It's Bo, it's Kayla, it's Wiley for all the reasons that you've said. Probably Zhang, obviously, is probably, I'm to feel like a total fanboy right now at this point, Jesus, but I mean, she's probably the best one on the card. Um, to be honest, if you think that the Justin Gaethje Max Holloway fight goes all five, I think this is a fantastic fight in general for cash. Uh, Justin Gaethje is out here. I mean, yeah, he's finishing a lot of the fights are getting finished, but 
while he's fighting 6.8 strikes a minute, 6.8, 6.2, 7.7, 4.4 against Habib. I mean, that's like his lowest one. So if we're talking 20, 25 minutes on sheer striking alone, the 8,800, is it 80? Yeah, $8,800 salary is looking pretty good if you think he also wins. So if you like Gaethje late or by decision, I think that's a decent cash prop uh, as well to get a little different and not repeat myself over and over again. Why not? I mean, we, we I, I like uh, Wiley just as much as you, Monk. I love hearing it. I yeah. love hearing it. Um, how can you not with, with the haircut like she has? Right. Uh, we, yes. Yes. Uh, Wheezy, what do you like for cash? Yeah, it's uh, Zhang Weili, and it's not just the haircut. That's a big part of it, but she's scoring 4.47 <laughs> DraftKings points per minute, so you could shave her head, and she's still actually a really good DraftKings play. Um, you know, her easiest path to victory here, too, it's is to wrestle, and, and she's scoring 114 points per win, and you're getting her at, what, 9,200, so that's a really nice look considering that she's what 83% implied to win this fight. And she's been an absolute grappling monster lately and has been putting up massive scores, probably the highest upside and maybe the safest option uh, on, on this uh, card way better than in my opinion, Bo nickel, because Wang has got five rounds to work here, you know, so it just gets easier for her. You know, as, as even if she doesn't get a finish uh, in order to score more than Bo Nickel, because Bo's only got three rounds to work, and we don't know what that dude even looks like out of the first round. So um, I think Zhang Wei Li is just an, a phenomenal option this week. Yeah, but I have a feeling we're all going to have her in our in our lineups. Just a, just a feeling. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I right. twice, actually, I'm going to break the rules. <laughs> you might. You might. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to our favorite value play. And here's a new rule. We can't talk about John Whaley for this one, okay? I, I think Deal. <laughs> Deal, I promise. I won't say your name. All right, Mug. Who do you like as a value play? I'm going to go with Zhang Whaley. No, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go uh, with another strawweight, historical, fantastic scorer. Jessica Andrade here against striker Marina Rodriguez. If this fight goes her way, if. Jessica, please, God, Jessica, please wrestle. Please take her down. Please do that, and please continue to score like 130 points. I mean, she's scoring a ton of points even without landing takedowns for the most part. Um, so I, I just love the upside. If she wins, how she wins, strawweight three-round fights, guys, she is, uh, you know, outside of she, she who, who, how, who shall not be named. That's kind of hard to say, actually. Uh, one of the greatest scorers at the division. I mean, it's got to be number two with a bullet easily so if she wins like she does win at 8100 you could either look at it as you, you could choose to look at it as the cheapest favorite on the card which that's what i'm choosing to do uh a tremendous amount of value possibilities here with uh with uh the pile driver jessica andrage yeah i'm surprised that's the first time we talked about andrage because even last time she fought against dern uh when everybody was on dern pretty much including myself i thought dern was going to win at the same time, it's like if Andrade wins this fight, she's going to score a million points because that's what she does. Like when she wins, she scores incredibly. And I think she was like 7,200 or something like that. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, and when, when Andrade wins fights, she scores very, very, very well. So I think she's a really good play this week. Uh, for me, it's a, it's another guy we've talked about a couple times. It's Max Holloway for some value, man. I mean, 7,400. Because like I like somebody said, even in a loss, even in a loss, like if this goes 25 minutes, Max Holloway can go out there, put up a very nice floor. But in a win, Max Holloway can go out there and put up well over 100 points. You know, we talk about great DraftKings scorers. Max Holloway is, is always one of them. I mean, this guy has incredible volume, landing over eight significant strikes per minute. We have 25 minutes to work with as well. So at 7,400, it's just weird seeing, you know, Max Holloway at this price tag. Way too cheap. I like him, and I like the upside he brings to the table. Wheezy, who are you liking for some value this week? Yeah, it's, he's such a safe play. I mean, uh, Max Holloway, that is. Uh, maybe the most durable fighter to ever set foot in the cage, and he's scheduled to fight for 25 minutes. If Gaethje can't finish him, you're looking at a guy who scores 3.4 DraftKings points per minute going for 25 minutes. Uh, so that, that that's, you know, and, and Gaethje allows 3.45, 
So it's not like he's some defensive masterpiece that Max isn't going to be able to score off of. Uh, extrap that, extrapolate that work rate out for 25 minutes. You're getting 85 points out of Max Holloway, even in a loss, if you can continue to count on that durability. And if he gets a finish, you know, it just goes up from there. Um, if he gets a win, it just goes up from there. So if that's not value, I don't know what is. I mean, any you hoes got a better idea than that? I mean, I know Gordo doesn't because he's a bigger Max Holloway fan than anyone here. You just said it, Brady. So, I, I mean, I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, you said it perfectly right there. Uh, Gordo, who you like and for some value? Yeah, let's talk about another underdog, uh, Jim Blank and Miller. You know, we'll keep a PG on the channel here. We'll we'll, we'll see if Buffer can do that as well. 7.6K, I think he's a guy who just has uh, a lot of upside of this matchup. There's the whole storyline of him going out there, getting wins at 100, 200, 300. Just seems to be a favorable matchup. And you add in all the external factors, the uh, horrible stoppage against Green last time, the ability for him to go out there and land a finish, not only on the feet with his hands, but on the mat as well, submission-wise, the ceiling for Miller and a win could look like hindsight value a lot of the time. And I think he has multiple ways of getting it done at 7.6K. He has finish upside. He has uh, a solid pace, and he's going to be someone that people are cheering for. I do think he's a very live underdog as well, and a win can make him look very well good. Yep. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, and then we'll move on to our dart throw. It's it's weird. There's not a, a ton of dart throws really sticking out to me. So curious to hear what you guys came up with. Uh, we'll start with our Uncle Weezy. Uncle Weezy, I have a feeling about what you might say, but what do you got? It's got to be Brundage. Yeah. It's got to be Cody Brundage. I mean, this guy has got a six-minute career of mixed martial arts. He brought up a very good point at the press conference today. He's like, what does this guy look like when he gets hit? We've never seen it once. And, and if anybody is a fan of wrestling, if you've ever watched college wrestling, you're, you're still – to this day, not allowed to punch your opponent in the face. They'll be a real dick about it if you do, as a matter of fact. So we don't know what this guy looks like if he gets hit. We don't know what this guy looks like after like the three-minute mark of a fight. And it's not like Cody doesn't know how to wrestle too. So, you know, I mean, look, am I, am I picking Cody to win the fight? No, I'm not. But, you know, is he 6% implied to win at the same time? No, that's not how MMA works. I mean, this is a fight. A lot of things can go wrong when you get in there. Uh, just, I mean, one calf kick can shut down your perineal nerve and then you can't walk anymore. I mean, look, Cody's the ultimate definition of a uh, dart throw. Don't put him in your cash lineup, Okay. You don't have to take those kind of chances, uh, you know, in a 13 fight slate, but this guy is the, is the perfect dart throw this week. Yeah, really the only dart throw for me would would be uh Cody Brundage. Yep. There, there's not much else to say. I do I think he wins. No, but if he does win, he's he's going to literally break the slate. I think he's going to be one of the lowest owned fighters on the entire card, and I think Bo Nickel is going to be one of the highest fighters on the entire card. So yeah, it's Bo Nickel. I mean, it's uh, it's Cody Brundage as far as a dart throw. Do I think it happens? No, but I'll have some Cody Brundage just, just in case it does. Uh, Gordo, who you like it for a dart throw this week? Yeah, I just want to talk about this guy because we have not done that yet. That is Money Moicano, 7.3K, and I think he's facing a very tough opponent in front of him, Jalen Turner. I love Turner. Great build for the division, great frame, great finishing ability. He's very dangerous, but he's still someone who we have seen taken down, and that is always not a – a good thing to have in your repertoire when you're facing guys dangerous as Moicano. Moicano is a very competent grappler. He's someone who has fought the best, the best of division as well. And although his chin has been fragile, he can compete in the striking and he has the much better submission grappling game. In my opinion, I'm not saying he wins all the time, but when he does, it's probably grappling oriented. And it's one that's probably going to score very, very well. I do think at 7.3 K, he deserves some respect because he is a very cheap underdog. And although he can lose, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities he's able to outgrapple him here. Should be a fun fight. Yep, he, de he definitely has a path. Um, Monk, uh, who are you liking for a dart throw? Yeah, real quick, what would you say to Bo Nickel? He thinks he's value at 20. He says there's fucking value at 2,500. <laughs> I mean, it could look value. I don't, he could look minus 3,000. We'll he see. says it's the easiest money you could ever make, I think is what he said. He said that? I On some shitty podcast where they literally pronounce the uh, money Moicano. I think he said Mock Nano or something like so. I turned it off immediately after I heard that mispronunciation. <laughs> but before that, he did say that. So, uh, yeah, uh -huh. shout out to Money Monk Monk Cotto. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, I guess I'll just change it up. I agree with uh, both of what all three of you guys said, rather. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, if we're talking super low, not super low owned, super low salaried guys, I personally think Figueredo is going to win. I think it does go to decision, though. It could get greasy. And Garbrandt, uh, like like I think it was Wheezy said, Figgy's coming up, obviously, to 135 finally. Um, so maybe he won't look like absolute death on the scale. But this isn't. I think Aljo for his weight class is much bigger going up than Davison is from flyweight to bantamweight, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, if this goes to greasy decision with any win, Cody Garbrandt, unless it's a Trevin Jones, 56 points in a win, Jesus Lord, unless it's that, then I think he's pretty much optimal with a win. So I'll change it up and give you a no love Garbrandt there for a dart throw. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do now is if you guys have not already, be sure to like the video Subscribe to the channel. Again, we go live every Wednesday um, besides next week because we don't have anything to talk about next week because there's no fights. Um, but what we're going to talk about now is the results from last week. And we had UFC Vegas 90. Let's get into it. So in fourth place was myself. I had that bum, Walter Walker. He scored 55. I thought he won, but you know, it's still that bum. Um, that bum, Melissa Mullen, she scored 19. Uh, that bum, Alexander Hernandez, scored 31. Uh, Chepe Marisco, I thought he lost, uh, but he scored 84. Dan Argetta scored 66 in a second-round loss. That was awesome. And then Chris Curtis scored 65 in a uh, close fight that I thought he potentially won as well. So he scored 323.94. In third place was Gordo. He had that bum, Melissa Mullins, 19. Uh, Charlie Campbell, 30 or 96. Uh, that bum, Alexander Hernandez, 31. Acharye, 46. Like I said, I thought he probably won. Daniel Argetta, 66. Chris Curtis, 65. Gordo scored 325.52. So, Gordo, you scored like two points uh, more than me. Congrats on that. And that's uh, Monk, after the swing with uh, Mariscal and Charrier. That would have been an interesting one to see if that went right. different. Yep. Absolutely. You um, just wanted to say his name, Gordo. Thanks, man. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, man. Don't do Oh, stop. <laughs> Yeah, there are some weird decisions on Saturday, that's for sure. But that's expected in this sport. Uh, so, Monk, you had Ignacio Bahamones, 116. Charlie Campbell, 96. Gene Matsumoto, 92. Alexander Hernandez, 31. Chris Curtis, 65. And Lucas Bresky with a 74. Monk, you scored uh, 476.99. And in first place, the guy with the hot hand, Ignacio Bahamones, 116. Charlie Campbell, 96. Brendan Allen, 118. Chepe Mariscal, 84. GDR 25, Dan Argetta 66, Uncle Wheezy first place scored 508.43, which I think that's two first places in a row. I'll take it, man. It was, you know, uh, not having to do content while I was in Europe, you know, gave me a little bit more time to kind of maybe just sink in and be, be a player for once instead of a content creator. And the beautiful scenery that I was just surrounded with out in France and Italy. It had to help out. Now I'm back here in the concrete jungles of this shithole called Chicago, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking to maybe put up a 210-point lineup this week. Get back to where I'm most comfortable, like fine wine being in the cellar. So let's get, let's get back to business this week. Absolutely. We got, we got to get back on track. Um, so we are 12 cards in, 2024 um we got fourth place is monk with 4545 draftings points gordo with uh 4806 in third we're seeing gordo in, in third and wheezy the hot man right now uh, <laughs> second place 4814 um and then myself with 4949 and it looks like Weezy, you're 135 behind me. Gordo, 143 behind me. And Monk, 403 behind me. So, Weezy, you're back from vacation. So, I don't know if I like your chances going forward. But we'll see how you do. We'll, we'll see how you do. Uh, Weezy, what is your lineup for this week? Okay, this week I am going with uh, Zhang Wei Li up top, obviously. Uh, Jalen, the Tarantula Turner. Armand Sarukian is going to be in my lineup this week. A very risky play because you – Charles can finish you at any point. Uh, and then we got Jamal Hill, Super Sadiq Yusuf, and Max Blessed Holloway. All right, Gordo, what do you got for this week? Yeah, well, I got some ground to make up here. Hey, I, I don't like being in third place. So we're going to switch it up a bit this week. We got Bo Nickel up top. We got Zhang Wei Li. Then we got Jim Blank Miller, Charles Oliveira. And then let's stack the Gaethje Holloway fight. Oh, nice. 
Jeez, I think we have uh, five of the same, Gordo. Oh, no. You said you have Nickel, Zhang Wei Li, Holloway, Oliveira? Yep. In Hill? No. Okay, you don't have okay, Miller. Are the other two. Okay, so I have uh, Zhang Wei Li, Bo Nickel, Max Holloway, Charles Oliveira, Jamal Hill, and Diego Lopez. The man with the, the gray hair. Uh, Monk, what do you got for a lineup this week? This might change. We have four of the same. Nickel, Zhang, Holloway, Oliveira. And I'm going to go uh, Alex Pajeda and Jessica Andraj. All right, there you have it. Those are the lineups for this week. Let's get to some, some listener questions. The first one is Old E. He said, no distance here. And I do remember the fight we were talking about. It was the Jim Miller and a Bobby Green fight. Um, so do you guys think it's going the distance or, or what? Anybody? I kind of uh, do. I kind of like goes to decision there for some reason, but I'm worried about Bobby Green after that, like what Kerry Hatley let happen to him. Uh, Brady, did you get any news? Is that, Have they arrested him yet? Dude, I witnessed that murder. So if I, guys, if I need to uh, testify, a bunch of witnesses. call me up. Call me up. Witnesses. That was that was terrible. That was horrible. But I kind of think it's green decision or or uh, or uh, Miller finish. You know what though, my as much as I I think that a green decision is definitely on the table, it's hard not to look at the fight doesn't go. I mean, you're not paying too much, like too bad for it. And on one side of things, you have the what a 41 year old guy in Jim Miller, and the other side you have a guy in Bobby Green who was finished violently his last time. I mean, the numbers on paper point towards it ending inside the distance. I do think Jim Miller has a uh, finish upside both on the feet and on the ground. It has some potential to it. I don't know if I'll get there myself, but I don't think it's a bad play. All right. Um, let's see. So this is for Wheezy Wheezy. Who's getting their ash shaved at 300? And he thinks that Brundage might be the ash shaving of the week. Is, is that, are, you, are you going out on the limb and taking Brundage to shave ass? Yeah, that would be... <laughs> Man, I'd be carrying my balls around in a wheelbarrow if, if, if that was the call this week. It is not. I might, I might get to a quarter unit bet on the Brundage money line because there's banana peels everywhere, uh, you know, these days and you just never know. And, you know, just a quick little thing here, right? When you put a money line at minus 2,500, you put a lot of temptation on the favorite. I'm just saying, man, when you can get paid 12 to one to, to throw a fight, there is a lot of temptation there. There's a lot of possibility. There's a lot of chicanery there. Um, I'm just saying weirder things have happened. That's when weird shit starts to happen, when the money line gets to minus 2,500. So, um, yeah, to, to minus 2,500, like 25 units to win one. Please do it. I, I'm fine with it. I'll, I'll do my little quarter unit. Uh, I'll throw it in the in the turlet. It, it'll, ha it, you know, it is what it is. But, uh yeah, man, uh, I went with uh, Al Pr Jerry Prochaska to shave the ass of Alexander Rakic. Prochaska is different. He's weird. You cannot duplicate that man when you're training for a fight. You only know what's going to happen once you get into the cage with that dude. And that dude lives in a forest and kicks trees. And he's a he's a he's a he's a unicorn. And I, I think he's going to go out there and stick that unicorn at, uh, horn right up. Alexander Rakic's ass and finish that fight in the second round. So yeah, that is the ass shaving of the week. Yeah, there's some bad blood in that fight. Uh, Rakic called uh, Yuri a fake samurai, and, and uh, Yuri took oh, offense. Hell to no, it. he took offense to it. Uh, this, he must I, not I'm be doubling the bet on Yuri now. He must not be watching <laughs> Joe. That, that, that too. Now. Fuck that <laughs> fake samurai shit. Oh man, yeah, that was crazy. Um, this can go to Monk. Do you think Brundage gets? Even to five percent ownership, probably around there. I think plus one or two percent yeah, uh, is possible, but I think it's right around there. Yeah, because there's going to be people that are like, "Yeah, well, it's going to break the slit," and then you know, so five percent, six, seven yeah. percent, and they're not wrong, but yeah. Um. So, which fights are we sprinkling the two thousand uh, addiction? You have to watch uh, me, Wheezy, and Lou on the MMA engine on Thursday. We'll give you a. A yam bags there. Um, I don't know. Any any spots sticking out in terms of like a draw or anything for you guys? 
draw could be I don't know. Lopez Yusuf could be a draw if that goes to decision. Um how about Gaethje Holloway? Holloway, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes that sense. That could be a wild fight. That could be just like a crazy fight. They'd have to run it back though, right? Because it was for a belt. Oh yeah. The BMF belt, one of the most uh coveted they keep uh, saying three titles are on the line, Wheezy. Did yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that to draw, it's going to be the, the greatest fight of all time. That means there's a couple 10 eights in there. Oh, great. And yeah, we'll, we'll have some yam bags tomorrow at, at 4 15 Eastern Time. Check it out on the MMA engine. Cannot wait for that show. Um, let's see here. Uh, who is Petroska? That that was that was a wheezy pronunciation question. Oh yeah, Prahaska. it's Prahaska. There's a dude in my fraternity house who had the exact same spelling of his name. He was Czech, all that shit. Everyone just just like your name is Prochaska, not Prohaska. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, you're you're in the Midwest here. It's Prochaska. <laughs> Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Ooh, okay. So Dixon saying, if my gut feeling is right and the majority of these fights go to decision, which fighters have the highest ceilings in decisions? I'll kick it off. Give me Zhang Wei Li. I think Kayla Harrison like could have like a dominant decision with just takedowns, control time, ground strikes. So I'd say Zhang Wei Li, Harrison, or two that kind of stick out to me. How about you guys? Max Andrade, Holloway. if she doesn't Andrade, get the finish. Yes, Andrade, if she doesn't get the finish. Max Holloway. Holloway, yeah. Ga- yeah. Gaethje. Holloway, Gaethje, for yeah. sure, dude. I think that fight's going to be just a whirlwind. All right, a couple more, guys. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> Weezy, what does it mean to circle the wagon? <laughs> dude, that is like, um, you know, if you would have, if you'd have been watching baseball back in the early '80s, you know, if your team was on a losing streak, the 83 year old announcer would be like, "I'll tell you, the Cubbies." They got to circle the wagons here with the Pittsburgh Pirates coming into town for a four-game stretch. So circle the wagons is like, I'm not going to get into it, but it was a formation that the settlers would get into with their wagons when they were being attacked by Indians. So you would you would be a, a just a sitting duck if you were in a line because they'd just pick you off with their arrows. But what you did was you made the wagons into a circle. You shot through the the the, the separations between the wagons, and you, hopefully all your women didn't get raped. It, things were different back then, folks. They were just different. Time times have changed. Certainly, they have they times have have certainly changed. Um, and did I know that Andrade leading her only fans? Yes, I, I, I am aware of he that. He lost a subscription. I did lose my <laughs> subscription. I did get uh, refunded though. So all good. That money is, uh, back. one extra Starbucks trip a week. Yes. Yes. So I got the money back and, uh, the images are, are saved. So I'm good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I did not see your parlay, Trevor. Type it in. Type it in again. Let me know. All right. So we'll do a, a quick uh, predictions here. Don't want to forget about the quick picks. We'll start with Uncle Wheezy. What are your quick picks for UFC 300, the fighter, the round, the method? Okay. So um, I have got come back to me. Okay. <laughs> um, Monk, what do you got for your predictions for UFC 300, the fighter, the round, and the method? Let's go uh, Padetta, KO3, Zhang, decision, scores 5,500 points. Gaethje, KO4, uh, Oliveta, sub 2, RNC, Nickel, KO1, Prochaska, Prohashka, Prochaska, KO2, Sterling, decision, Harrison, decision, Lopes, decision, uh, Money, Macchiato, sub 2, rear naked choke. Let's go there. Andraj, KO2, Jim Miller. Sorry, Jim fucking Miller. KO2, Ooh. Davison, Figueredo, uh, decision. All right, I'm going Hill, KO2, Zhang, KO3, Holloway, KO4, Oliveira, sub two, rear naked choke, Nichols, sub one, head and arm choke, Rackage, KO1, Cater, decision, Harrison, decision, Lopez, KO2, Turner, KO1, Rodriguez, KO1, uh, Miller, sub two, club and sub, uh, guillotine, 
uh, Figgy KO2. Uh, Gordo, what do you got for quick picks? We're going to go with Alex Pereira KO2, Whaley Zhang KO4, uh, Max Holloway decision, Armand Sarzukian decision, Bo Nickel KO1, uh, Jerry Prohashka KO1, Calvin Cater decision, Kayla Harrison KO1, uh, Sadiq Youssef decision, Jalen Turner KO2, um, Jess Kondraj decision, uh, Jim Miller KO2 I have written down here, and Davison Figueredo KO2. All right, last but not least, we got Wheezy. What are your quick picks for UFC 300? I got Alex Pereira KO4. I got Weili Zhang KO3. Uh, Justin Gaethje decision. Armand Sarukian decision. Uh, Bo Nickel KO1. Yuri Prohaska KO2. Calvin Kada decision. Uh, Kayla Harrison decision, Sadiq Youssef second round knockout, uh, Jalen Turner second round knockout, Jessica Andrade decision, Bobby Green decision, Davison Figueredo decision. All right, guys, there we have it. We're about an hour in, gonna kick it around. Wheezy, let the people know about the a million shows you're doing this week. <laughs> I don't even know anymore how many, like. Uh, probability starting in 10 minutes on my YouTube channel. Go there with me and Brady are going to break down all these fights, all the prop betting markets in these fights. We're going to pick out some value for you guys so that we can all stack cash tickets like flapjacks tomorrow. MMA engine props to consider and maybe bet tomorrow. Couch warriors channel, uh, the panel with, uh, Tyler couch warrior, myself, Pepe Sylvia, and from the desk, of Lou Betcha, doing two shows of Lou Betcha tomorrow. And then on Friday, um, I know I'm doing the Golden Octagon show in the evening. Uh, I also think that, the, oh, Greasy Four Leg Parlay, Saturday, best bet with Brady, watch along, and then a nap, I think. Uh, and, then, and then after that, I'm going to bathe in the blood of my yes. vanquished DraftKings enemies, because I've been shaving asses lately, and there's a lot of blood in that bathtub. There's going to be some more this week, because I like my lineup this week, even though I'm back in Chicago and probably shit the bed. Thank <laughs> you all for watching. See you in 10 minutes for probability. Yep, go go right over there right now, guys, when, and check it out. Uh, Monk, let the people know about all the content. You got a new show out uh, coming. Is that is that all yet? I'm looking forward to watching it. Not yet. We're doing, uh, well, of course, uh, uh, Monk and Lou's happy hour, midnight happy hour, tomorrow, 11 p.m. Central Time, with special guest Luke, SWR betting in the house. Cannot wait. Uh, he used to do this show for all you youngsters out there who haven't been, a, been around that long. He used to do this show um before he moved to vegas so very excited for that but the uh the show that i'm recording tonight with finesse with gordo gambles i got i'm, I'm working on my weatherman skills i got it right the first time uh and uh finesse and patrick addicted to combat bankroll right. or bust the world's first mma betting game show we are recording it in about 24 minutes so i gotta go figure out my obs and uh i will be editing it tonight it'll probably be out late tonight so be sure to check that out on the Good. Monk Maddox channel, of course. I'm looking forward to that. And then we got Gordo lets people know about all the content you are doing this week for UFC 300. Of course, you can find all my work on the Plays and Fades YouTube channel. I have a full card DraftKings breakdown and a full card betting and picks breakdown. It's the first time I ever split them up into two different videos because there's just so much to talk about. Don't get used to it. I'm pretty lazy, so we'll okay. stick to one video going forward. But got those separated down. Also, the Best Bets video sponsored by Cool Bet out tomorrow. I'm doing the show with Monk. I have premium content out on Establish the Run with Brett Apley, as well as a uh, live Q&A and, and lineup construction video out Saturday morning, which we'll be doing with Establish the Run as well as all my bets and, and plays we posted on the Gordo Gambles uh, Twitter page. So be sure to check that all out. Uh, best of luck to all you guys and all your DraftKings endeavors. Appreciate you guys. And, and I was just happy to be able to hear that I'm able to bathe in the blood of my vanquished enemies again. I've been waiting. Um, there hasn't been much blood, uh, unlike Easy, you know, but it's time to get back into it. I've got a throne to recapture, and uh, I'm ready to. So good luck this weekend, guys. Should be a good one. Let's go. And then, uh, yeah, like Weezy said, going live in about – uh, less than 10 minutes uh, on his channel, Uncle Wheezy, for probability. Looking forward to talking through the card from a prop perspective. 
tomorrow uh, with Lou Betcha, props to consider, and then maybe bet 4.15 Eastern time. My final thoughts, live stream Friday, and then best bet on Saturday, two hours before the prelims. I I think they start at maybe 7, so I'll be going live at 5. If they start at 6, go, we'll go live at 4, so two hours before. And, yeah, guys, uh, best of luck for UFC 300. Great car. Let's make some money. We'll talk to you guys soon. See you.